Really, I've been fortunate to have a front row seat on the housing crisis that exists, not only in Maine, but in the nation. And what we're finding is that this is a storm that's been building for a long time. There's been chronic underproduction of housing in this country for decades now, and it's really kind of come to a head in the past couple of years because we had very low interest rates. So this took a lot of people who were on the sidelines and brought them to the table, so to speak, to buy because they could afford to buy with the low rates. That drove the prices up with demand like we've really never seen before at an unprecedented level. And now you have a situation in which prices are at a level that majority of people could afford at lower interest rates. Those rates are gone now. They can't afford the payment. But we have people building homes in a price point that is not able to be supported by the current interest rates that people in our area can afford. So we're kind of in this catch-22, right? Which is we recognize that we need more inventory. People want to build more inventory, but they're concerned that if they do it, that when it's done, it won't be at a price that would either appraise or that somebody would be able to buy it. And so they're a little bit gun shy, if you will, about building and nothing's happening. So now we have this national problem in which we need to build about 7 million homes to kind of catch up, if you will and we're not even remotely close to that. And in Maine, we need to add an additional 84,000 homes to have more of an equilibrium and a place for people to live. So because I've been seeing this and witnessing it on the front lines in my role in building policy to help alleviate the housing crisis, I've come to the conclusion that it's vital that I and others who are interested really play a more active role in creating this inventory that we so desperately need because it's not just going to magically appear. And in doing so, we have an opportunity to create more foundational jobs for the communities that we serve, which is good for the local economy, and also create housing, housing that we hope is in a price point that the people who are a part of creating that housing, they can actually afford to live there. So uh, this is a very difficult thing to do <laughs> with the cost of labor, uh, the labor shortage that we have, and also the cost of building materials. So to be frank, this is something that requires a lot of innovation uh, and creativity, really thinking outside the box, things like zoning, how we can change zoning in a way that allows for more density, so you can fit more places on a smaller pieces of land, thereby making them more economically viable. Uh, things like looking at different construction methods, you know, instead of building on site, maybe building off site so that there's more uh, of a systemic approach to the way in which the properties are being built so that they can be done in a more controlled environment more quickly and hopefully at a lower cost. And looking at ways in which we can then package together financing, financing options for people to be able to close on these properties and then move in and call them home. So it's great to be involved in helping people buy and sell properties, and we need to continue to do that with very, very high levels of commitment to customer service. It's very important. But in addition to that, I personally am committed to finding ways to add additional inventory to this market. And I think for a lot of real estate agents who are maybe a little bit further along in their career and they have some sustaining business going on, that looking at being a part of adding to the housing inventory around our area, it's really a win-win for everybody, I think.